Third-party JavaScript code is one of the most powerful features available to your Lightning Web Components. Not because you're lazy and cannot build it yourself, I mean, maybe you are, but because it gives you a chance to look at a solution from a different angle. And yet, a Salesforce ecosystem is rich, no doubt. But frankly, some things just aren't there. Hey everyone, today we are diving into how to actually use third-party JavaScript libraries in your Lightning Web Components. And mostly those just libraries do not provide a single file but only NPM modules. So today I'll show you how we can bundle such a module and upload it to Salesforce. Let's get started. The Salesforce rule is simple. Only load what is in static resources. No dependencies or references to anything outside Salesforce. And so whenever I came across libraries that were presented as NPM modules, I would skip it and keep looking for the ones that provided a URL, so that I could open that URL, download a file, open my Salesforce and add it to the static resources. And that it's very easy to load the static resource and external code using the load script function in LWC that is provided to us out of box. But as soon as we see a line of code like this, it immediately repeals us, because it doesn't have such an easy process. But who said it would be easy? Such NPM modules are actually a collection of different JavaScript files that are dependent on each other, and which you cannot just grab and load, you have to take care of dependencies. We call those libraries non-browser compatible, because they are mostly designed for the Node.js environment. And if you found the browser compatible library, which provides a single file that you can just grab and load to Salesforce, you're lucky. But if not, let's see how we can bundle this module into one single file and how we can use it in LWC. To begin with, I'll go to VS Code and create a new project. This is where you spent most of your time and so the terminal here will be quite familiar to you. Unless, of course, you're from the elite who use Cursor, my web developers. So, in the terminal in VS Code, the first thing you need to do is install Brav Serify, which is an open source utility to bundle NPM modules into a single file. That is, take all the dependencies and create a single file that contains everything. Once you have it installed, we can get to work. Go to the library you're interested in, Copy its npm install and paste it in your terminal, npm install chart.js. Wait a little bit, and once you've installed this module, you need to find out its main JS file, like the file from which this library starts. It should always be there, like the starting point. To do this, we use the following path. First, node modules, then the name of your module, and then package.js. JSON, and we get all the details about this module you just downloaded, and here we look for the main attribute. Here it is, and it has the value dist chart cgs. The cgs extension means that this is common JS, primarily used in Node.js, but again, we don't really care. Also notice here this one chart umd gs this umd word is a gold mine which actually means that you can take this umd file and it will work as is and you probably won't even have to bundle it at all however in our case let's pretend that it doesn't exist only main attribute so we take our main attribute cgs chart cgs and go back to the terminal here we use our previously downloaded serify and add this path as a first parameter and then add o attribute output and add the file names that we want to get, the bundled one. By the way, this npx prefix here will be optional if you are using a normal terminal, but in our case it should be here. What this command does is analyze all the dependencies in our main module file and create a browser-compatible code. Now let's try actually to use it, right? So we got a file and we go, we archive the file, we load it to static resources in Salesforce, and after that go to your Lightning Web Component and load the static resource and external code using load script function. And here we also have to specify the path to the file inside zip because we archived it in the first place. So this function will return us a promise, right? You remember what is the promise is. So we add zen and here in order to check if everything loaded correctly, we will add console.log window.chart. Chart is the object from the documentation. And it is important here as well to specify window, because all your third-party JavaScript code uh, libraries must be available from and through the window, global window object. Now let's try to check what the browser tells us when we open our component. And, oops, 
our library, even though it loaded normally, right? We didn't get an exception. But we don't have access to the library objects and functions. It's like loaded but hidden and we cannot use its code. This is because in most cases such libraries do not expose themselves globally to the window object, which is a requirement of Salesforce. All your third-party JavaScript libraries must expose themselves globally for use. In this case, it doesn't happen. However, there is a way to fix it. Now let's go back to our terminal and back to the browserify command, where we specify the conversion of our module into a single JS file. And here we add a new attribute s and specify some custom name for this library. What this command will do is wrap the entire file and module, all the dependencies, in a wrapper that will be exposed globally to the window object. Therefore, all objects and functions of this library will be available to us by accessing the wrapper. What I mean by this is, let's first archive this new file and load it back into static resources. And now, in our LWC component, here, instead of window.chart, we need to first specify the name of our wrapper, I mean, between actually, which is, in our case, was test, and only then the chart class object itself. And now, if you open your component, you will see that this time we were able to get a result, which actually means that a library code is now exposed globally through the test wrapper and therefore we can use its functions. The only caveat to consider is that now you will need to specify this wrapper every single time you access anything from the library. For example, if the documentation for a particular library says to call new chart, in our case, this will be new window.test.chart. However, no one guarantees that this will work. Lightning Web Security has a number of limitations that can be applied for this. In this case, in the description, I'll leave a link to an article where I describe how you can change the source code so that it works in Salesforce. And special thanks to everybody who shared their thoughts and ideas. Your input means a lot to me. And if you're up for a challenge and want to improve your LWC skills, reach out and join our Find a Guilty application as a contributor. And that's all for today. I'll see you anytime soon.